Hey, welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we identified masters and slaves in our block diagram, but we still have some doubts regarding the bus matrix and how exactly this master and slaves communicate. Great. So for that, we have to look into the bus matrix diagram, which is just given below in this document. Here it is multi HP bus matrix. And if you just browse through this document here, you will get a nice diagram. And uh, let me just copy this diagram to my presentation. All right, so now I'm ready with this diagram. And uh, here the circuitry, what you are seeing here, all these connected dots and these vertical and horizontal lines, this is actually called as multi HP bus matrix. And all these are called masters, so we can name them. This is M1, this is M2, this is M3, M6 and M7. So here this is also actually another master but since it is not touching the bus matrix so we are just not naming it that's it. So strictly speaking these buses are not masters. These buses are governed by HP master port here that is inside this processor here. So we actually call them as masters okay. Great, so now there are seven slaves. This is S1, S2, and S7. So seven slaves. Consider this ARM Cortex M4, master one, that is the I-code bus. Now, so when you trace this vertical line, you see three connected dots here, right? So those are actually fuses given by the bus matrix. The bus matrix is like electronic fuses which connects various masters to the various slaves. Now let's consider only this master. So now this master can talk to the slave one. So because there is a fuse, it can talk to slave three. That is actually the SRAM one. And it can also talk to the slave seven. That is actually the external memory controller. So the IBUS here cannot talk to the, let's say, the SRAM2 or it cannot talk to the HP2 peripherals. It cannot even talk to the HP1 peripherals. So why ARM uses IBUS? It actually uses IBUS in order to fetch instructions, isn't it? So this also means that it can only fetch instructions from flash that also through the iCode interface. It can fetch instructions from the SRAM and it can also fetch instructions from the external memory which is connected to the external memory controller. So that means it cannot execute instructions from peripherals. Okay, so here there are no fuses, isn't it? And this also indicates that the ARM processor can fetch instructions from SRAM1 over the iCode over the iCode bus. It's possible. So you see this connection here. Great. So now let's talk about Dbus. So Dbus for Dbus, there are also three connections. So it can talk to the second slave, it can talk to the third slave, and it can talk to the seventh slave. This path clearly indicates that decode bus fetches the read-only data or data from the flash memory over this decode bus interface. And it can also fetch data from the SRAM that's possible but it cannot fetch data from the SRAM too. There is no connection. All right, so now let's see the system bus. For system bus here, there are four connections. Let's say you have kept some instructions in the SRAM one. And uh, by default, you know, ARM executes instructions from flash, isn't it? So that is also through the iCode interface, but now Let's say you have stored some instructions in the SRAM one and now you jump to the SRAM location. That is you program the PC with the address of the SRAM one. So then what processor does? That's okay. The processor actually now fetches the instruction over the SRAM one. It can do that because there is a connection and processor can use SBUS in order to fetch the data also. Okay. From SRAM one. If you use IBUS and DBUS in order to execute instructions and to fetch data it can do simultaneously because ibus is going to the flash 
and dbus is also going to the flash so it can fetch instruction over this bus and it can fetch data over this bus right so simultaneously that will actually boost the performance but if you use system bus in order to execute instructions then what happens okay so it has to use system bus in order to fetch instructions from the SRAM right so then the data access and the instruction access has to be serialized okay so because there is only one bus through which you have to fetch instructions as well as the data okay uh, that also means that if you use system bus in order to execute instructions the performance will be slower but if you use uh, ibus and dbus interface in order to fetch instructions and data since there are two parallel buses performance will be more and now you can also see that the system bus is also connected to the SRAM2. It can talk to the SRAM2 and system bus can also talk to the HP2 peripherals and HP1 peripherals. So that means this bus matrix clearly indicates that all the HP2 peripherals and HP1 peripherals, they finally talk to the processor over the system bus only okay because there are no connections here great so now let me erase everything now let's come to the dma1 and in the dma1 it has actually two ports master hp ports here which actually gives out two buses here one is called as dma peripheral interface or peripheral bus and dma memory bus the memory bus is actually again connected to the bus matrix and it has the capacity to access all these slaves whereas the peripheral bus is connected all the way to here it is it is connected all the way to the APB1 bus okay so that we can verify by using the block diagram here okay so here it is this is a DMA1 bus is coming all the way to okay all the way to APB1 bus okay so then finally you know it touches the APB1 bus here okay so that's what uh, shown here this path okay great so now and the DMA2 the DMA2 also you know gives out two buses one is peripheral bus which is going to uh, goes to APB2 bus and that peripheral bus is also connected to the bus matrix so that the peripheral bus has the capacity to access all these slaves okay so whereas this peripheral bus can only talk to the peripherals of the APB1 bus right but in this case the peripheral bus has the capacity to talk to the APB2 bus as well as all these other slaves right so this has got more privileges than this and finally the dma memory bus of the dma2 controller can talk to all these peripherals great so that means in summary what i want to say is bus matrix is uh, electronic circuitry you, you can consider like that those fuses actually decide the master and slave communication privileges okay so you just saw that the ibus master can only talk to three slaves so that's the privilege given in this design okay so this design may be different in another microcontroller all right great so that's the bus matrix who decides the master and slave communication and all the communication finally go through this bus matrix so let's take an example for that let's take an example let me erase everything and let me go to the block diagram let's say the spy 4 peripheral now the spy peripheral is actually connected to the apb2 bus right so now let's say the spy has some data to be transferred to the memory then how does it work let's find out by using bus matrix so spy is connected to apb1 bus and let's forget about dma so let's say let's assume there are no dma controllers or dma controllers are uh, not active 
now spy has to exchange data how it happens from peripherals it will come to apb1 bus from apb1 bus it goes to hb right why because it's finally it goes and touches the hb bus right this bus here it is this is hb right right so it comes over here like that it comes over here i said dmas are not active uh it comes here now it has to take this path right because there is a fuse it goes over the system bus to the internal register of the arm then arm executes store instruction and that store instruction has to utilize the system bus right and according to the address it goes to the memory all right so this is a path so so i hope you are understanding this and and let's say if you now use dma okay for the spy peripheral okay in order to transfer data what happens okay so this is non dma case now if you use dma what happens spy1 is connected to the apb1 that we know now the data instead of going to hb1 where it goes here it is the data comes all the way to the bridge and from bridge instead of taking hb path here it takes this dma path right so what happens it takes the dma path so this is the dma path comes all the way to the dma1 peripheral bus takes the u turn and comes to the sram so look this path this path is actually outside the bus matrix that is it has got another bus and then it comes to the memory so this is the case of this is with dma1 with the help of dma1 so that's the data transfer and uh, the data has to be moved from the bus matrix to the master from slaves and sometime with the help of dma you can avoid the bus matrix so as you saw here okay so finally if it wants to talk to the memories it has to go through the bus matrix great so now in the next lecture uh, analyze uh, this again with one important use case okay i'll see you in the next lecture